Let's take a minute to appreciate the advancement of molecular models. What you see on the left is Watson and Crick's original model for DNA. It's big, it's bulky, it's made of metal, and I don't want to know how long it took them to make. And what you see on the right here is a JMOL image of DNA, which is one of the cur most current methods for visualizing organic molecules. There are several models that we can use to visualize an organic structure. A wireframe model is the least bulky and makes it easiest to view an entire molecule at a time. A ball and stick model allows us to see the individual atoms, but it is not so bulky that it will hinder our view of a molecule. And a space filling model is definitely the most bulky, but it allows us to see a compound's actual size. The best way to understand a space filling model is to think of an atom's nucleus as representing its point in space and that atom's electron cloud that surrounds it representing the size and shape of that atom and that's what a space filling model represents. This electron cloud that surrounds each atom is determined by a van der Waal radii which is represented by each of these clouds and we could see that since atom is larger based off of our periodic trends than a hydrogen atom that hydrogen atom will be harder to see in the space filling model and the reason space filling models and van der Waals radii are valuable to organic chemists is that they allow us to predict how different atoms in two different molecules how close they can come together before they start to repel away from one another so there you have it. You've been provided with the models that allow us to visualize organic structures. And what we'll begin to do is to look at these models to determine whether a molecule is the same or not the same as another molecule. And what we'll find is, by answering this simple question, we can understand the great diversity that exists in organic reactivity.